Welcome back. One of you guys asked me if I would do a quick video on making bookshelves, so that's what I'm doing. Let me show you right here. Down on the ground, this is a four foot bookshelf that I'm standing in the middle of. And right now what I'm doing is I'm making side pieces. I've got to make four of these guys. So I'm actually routing dado grooves in the sides. And these are the sides that I'm making, which are just short. I want them to be exactly a four foot by four foot square. So when you cut them down, you cut them down you know, two sheets of plywood shorter. So when you take these, these all started as four footers, you stick it all together, it makes a nice box. And I really, I'm very visual. Like when I do carpentry, I've got to lay it out and work on it. So I've got to make sets of sides. And I have all of my sets of sides. And then I have the bottoms, which are exactly four foot. Then I'm going to route some grooves and I'll show you how I do that. I've cut all my sides now and I have to mark where I'm going to put my dados. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it at the one foot. This is exactly a four by four. One foot, two foot, three foot, and then we'll cut the groove underneath each one of those. One of the things I always do when I am doing a woodworking project like this is I mark I mark what I'm doing, right? Because I don't know if I'm going to move the wood around or forget where I was or whatever else. So if I can remember, this is this is going up towards the top because it's not going to be the same from the top to the bottom. And this is going to be hidden because it'll be under a shelf, but it's a little cheap sheets because I don't count on my own brain to be able to keep track of all the stuff I'm doing. Another thing that I like to do as much as possible is to get a bunch of materials done uh, ahead of time. So like all this stuff here, um, you know, I cut, I cut shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves and did as much production line as I could because then I can set the fence of the table saw once and run through things. So when I'm doing six shelves you know it made sense for me to go ahead and cut here's the tall ones they have the same depth they're all 9.5 inches deep and they're close to four foot so what I did was I cut all the four footers because some four foots I'm using for ends some four foots like this is a four foot that goes all the way across the bottom and then these are cut back to like 47 um, in a notch or so and so then I had all these pieces ready to go so I can put them together. And then I just ran all these four footers through, set the fence on the table saw once, and then I could cut all my shelf pieces. Another little trick for you. These are 12 inches apart, these lines, but the shelves will actually be about 11.25 inches apart. So this is the width of my router base up until it intersects the cut. And I want the cut to be just below this line right here. So what I did was I made a router spacer. So you put your router spacer up to the line, put your square on it, clamp it down, and then you can just run right against there and you get the exact same beautiful cut every time.
it's very important to get good food when you're doing carpentry. Very, very important. You don't want to live on garbage like those alcoholics at construction sites, you know, with like Cheetos and fried foods and all that stuff. No. So we are eating borscht. Rachel made borscht. I can't spell it, but I can eat it. Another important thing to remember when you're woodworking is to store yourself some hot coffee. Put it on the dash of your car and use natural solar energy. It's renewable, sustainable, and green. So here we have it on the ground. Bottom, top, and the edges are just screwed together. Uh, and so what I did was, in order to figure out exactly how far it is from there to there to put the shelves into the dados, um, I put the, you just measure straight across. So it's exactly 48, and then you measure to the inside of those notches, which is 47 minus 1 8. So it's 1 8 short of uh, 47 inches. So that's what we do for the insides. And then we knock this thing together and put the back on. See those, uh, those dados there? When you get them tight, it's a nice fit. And then you put the screws at either end, and you've got something groovy going on. Just, they'll support more weight, and it's a, it's a much better join, even though it's dead simple, than just flat screwing it into the side. I mean, you can do that, but screwing into plywood isn't the greatest thing in the world. Anyways, like, the, you know, going into the end of it, you tend to get splits and stuff. But if you've got that extra little bit of groove right there and they're sitting in there, that's not going anywhere. It's gonna be beautiful, perfect for books. So these two guys here are in the varnishing phase. These three here now are waiting to have their backs put on and then they'll go to the varnishing. And as you notice here, I've got these shelves. These are 11 and a quarter, so they match the tall ones. But we went ahead and did a broader one here, which is about 15 inches between the shelves, roughly, uh, because one of the ladies from the school where I'm working came down and said, you know, we have some of these taller books, and I know they said they wanted them all the same way, but could you do something about that? Is it possible? It's too late. We, it's too, is it too late? You know, and I said, no, no, we can do it. So we're spacing two of those with, uh, two shelves in the middle instead of three shelves in the middle. So the last step is you cut your quarter inch ply and you stick it on the back. So you make it fit really nicely. Stick it on the back. And this has got one coat of varnish on it. This one has got almost two coats on it except for the back. This one's got two coats on it. This is one of my broad ones, you see? What I decided to do, since they're gonna be bigger books, was to put braces in the center of it to make it stronger. Little extra good, good upgrade there. A little good carpenter upgrade. That one there's got two coats on it. And then right here, this one's got two. This one's got three. And you can see like it's starting to get magical. Three coats. Three coats, it starts to look good. It gets kind of glassy, you know. Still looks like plywood, but that's some nice, that's some nice plywood. This is contemporary. That's what we're going for. A contemporary clean IKEA plywood look. So that's what I'm up to when I'm not gardening. Oh yeah. Catch you guys later. Go make some bookshelves. It's fun. Thank you.